In this section, we're going to begin to talk about functions. We're going to start with the definition. So our definition says that a function is a rule that relates two sets of numbers. For example, y is equal to 3x plus 5 is an example of a function. So as we start to look at this, what I want you to remember is that when you first started learning about equations and graphing those equations, and we even talked about this in the first couple of weeks of our class, we talked about making a table of values. And we talked about how we could select any x value that we wanted. So I'm just going to pick a few here. Um, so maybe if I pick x is equal to 0, then I could come over here and in place of the x in my function, I could plug the 0 in. And when I do that, I see that the y value that corresponds to that is going to equal 5. And then I'm going to pick, what if I pick positive 2? All right, and again, if I come over and I take my equation, and in place of the x, I put a 2, then 3 times 2 is 6, plus 5 is going to be 11. And then let's do a negative. Suppose that I chose negative 1 for my x value. So I would put a negative 1 in for the x in the equation. 3 times negative 1 is negative 3. When I add it to 5, I'm going to end up with 2. And so keep in mind that you could continue doing this as much as you want. So I'm just going to put dot, dot, dot to indicate that this procedure could continue on indefinitely. All right, so with that in mind, I want us to go back to our definition for a second. All right, we said that a function is, first of all, a rule. So the rule is that we're going to take our x value, and whatever that x value is, we're going to multiply by 3, and then we're going to add 5. So the equation itself is the rule that tells us how to get from x to y. Then we say that the rule actually relates two sets of numbers. So we have a set of numbers made up of all of these values. So this is the set of all my x values. And you may remember that that set is what we refer to as the domain. And so we'll see that term come back into play as we get further into this section. And then we also have a set of numbers over here. This set of numbers is the set of all my y values. And this set we refer to as the range. So again, with this definition, we say that a function is a rule. The rule is multiply by 3 and then add 5. And that rule relates two sets of numbers. It relates the x values, or the domain, to the y values, or the range. Now, when I say that a function is a rule that relates two sets of numbers, that's a very easy definition for me to understand. I also want to show you the definition that typically appears in a math book for a function. So that definition says that a function is a relation that associates with each element of x a unique element of y. And sometimes we get a little lost in the wording there. Right? What does that actually mean? What is that actually telling me? The main idea behind that definition is saying that if it's a function, then you are not allowed to have any duplication of the x values. Okay, that all of the x values have to be unique. So I'm just going to make that note here. What does that mean? That means that I cannot duplicate 
the x values. Now, it doesn't mean that we can't do that on the y's, okay? But as far as the x's go, all of the x's have to be different. All right, so if you look at the example that we have in the box, so this is a relation. It's going to map, and I'm going to kind of write out the points here. It's going to map the point 1 to P, so I'm going to use that as a coordinate. It's going to map 2 to Q, so that would be like a second point. And then we're also going to have the point 3, which gets mapped to Q. Now, as long as my x values are different, then I have a function. And they are, because I have 1, 2, and 3. So I have completely different numbers for the x, and that's why we have a check mark there. We're saying that, yes, this is a function. All right, but look at your second example. So if I do the same thing, write out my points, I have a mapping that goes from 1 to P. Then I have a mapping that takes 2 to P. Note that 2 also goes to Q. And then we have 3 going to R. So now if I look at those points, I can see that I have a 2 that is duplicated. That's an x value that is mapped to two different y values. That is not allowed. We cannot duplicate the x values for a function. And so this is considered to be not a function, which is why we have the x underneath on this one. So you want to remember as you're working with the functions that all of your x values have to be different. All right, let's try a couple of other examples. So we just want to go through these and answer yes or no. Are they functions or not? All right, and so we'll do the same sort of thing. We'll go through and we'll map out the points and then make sure that our x's are different. So on my first problem, I have, and I'll just write them down, I have 1 going to A, I have 2 going to B, I have 3 going to A, and I have 4 going to be. And remember that in order for it to be a function, you just need your x values to be different. And so we can see when we look at the x's, they're all different. So yes, this is a function. All right, let's look at the second example. The second example, we have 1 going to A. We have 2 going to B. We also have 2 going to C, and we have 4 going to B. And again, we need all of the x's to be different, and this 2 is my problem. I cannot duplicate the x values, so since that's happening, I'm going to say no, that that is not a function. All right, for our last one, we have 1 going to A, we have 2 going to B, and we have 4 going to be. Your x values are all different, 1, 2, and 4. So therefore, this is a function. Now, the problems don't always appear just like this with this diagram that we have here with the relation between the x's and the y's. So I want to show you a couple of other ways that the problems can be presented just so that you don't get thrown if the format looks a little different. Alright, so we can have something like this where the function is given to us, given to us as a set of ordered pairs. Alright, and it's asking function or not. So again, you're going to do exactly the same thing. We're going to go through and we're going to check to make sure that all of our x's are unique. So if I look at the first one, I have 1, 2, 3, and 4. And that should have a... And so does that represent a function? Yes, because all of our x values are different. What about on the second one? We have 1, 2, 3, and 6. Does that represent a function? Yes, all of our x's are different. Now, note here that you do have a duplication on the y, but we don't care. That doesn't make it not a function. The only thing that we're looking at is the x's. 
All right, and then our last one, we have negative three, negative two, zero, one, and another negative three. So because we have this duplication of x values, this is not going to be a function. And then we can also be asked whether something is a function or not based on the graph. So I want you to remember your vertical line test as a way to determine if a graph is a function or not. So the vertical line test says that if you can draw a vertical line that touches the graph in more than one place, the graph is not a function. All right, so for example, I'm going to start at the bottom here on this bottom left one. If I draw my vertical line here, then, the then my vertical line touches the graph here and it touches it here. This is not a function. It can only touch the graph in one place to have a function. All right, what about over on the bottom right? If I draw my vertical line here, I've got it crossing here and here not a function. What about on our graph shaped like an S? If I were to draw my vertical line here, it's going to cross it here, here, and here. Again, if it crosses in more than one place, it is not a function. All right, but on this last one, if I drew my vertical line here, for example, I would only cross the graph in one place. So that would be okay. If I drew my vertical line here, I would only cross the graph in one place. So that would be okay. If I drew it here, only crossing in one place. So as long as you only hit the graph in one place per line, then you can say that this is a function.